record button. It's recording now. Okay. Okay, I am going to start and hopefully um, Allison will be joining us. I want to welcome everyone to the June 13th, 2022 meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee. Given that we have a form of the committee present, I'm calling the meeting to order at 8.32 a.m., bright and early. The meeting's being conducted by Zoom and pursuant to the acts of 2020 and 2021, allowing meetings to be conducted re remotely. The first thing I need to do is make sure I can, everyone can hear and be heard. Um, I wanna make sure I go around the room and don't miss anyone. So I'm going to be calling people out by name. It's actually alphabetical by last name. And please just indicate that you can hear and be heard when I call your name. Angelica? Here. Paul? Here. Simone? Here. Allison, I don't think has joined us yet. Ben? Hello. Sean? Here. Phoebe? Here. Mike? Here. Rupert? Here. Jonathan? Good morning. Tammy? Here. And Alicia? Here. I decided to print out the names because I don't always see everyone well on the screen. Um, Margaret is going to show the agenda on the screen and then I'm gonna be making some opening remarks to try to set up uh, what we're doing at today's meeting. Margaret. Okay, can everybody see that? Uh, yes, um, if we just, uh, that that's great. Um, you know, as everyone knows, I think everyone knows, today is the first important decision we will be making as a committee. And rather than going into the community forum, which I think a lot of people heard, I'm just gonna lay out the process um, that I hope will work to get to a preferred solution. So Dinesco can then proceed to write the report and get to, get to the report. Um, we are going to be selecting and recommending a preferred solution based on our assessment of a range of options. Today's decision represents the first major step forward to moving to a new elementary school for Amherst children and bringing this from an aspiration to reality. Our design team has provided us with a wealth of comparative information, including development of classroom and program layouts that meet the education program goals in three different building options. They've provided us with extensive analysis of the conditions of two sites and steps that would be taken to mitigate those site conditions, analysis of traffic and the relative costs of six options that include HVAC systems that will meet the town's net zero bylaw. As a committee, we have established a criteria matrix to help evaluate and compare the alternatives and have engaged in an open public process, including multiple community forums that have generated substantial public comment and questions. This input in my personal view has added much value to the process. We have a wealth of information, likely as much as possible at this still early stage in the project. We are fortunate that we have two excellent choices of where to locate the school. Both sites would work well for an elementary school. This also makes the choice more difficult as Wildwood and Fort River have significant but different strengths. Once we make the selection today, we'll be able to focus and keep our eyes on the prize, which is a new elementary school that will meet the educational needs of our children for decades to come in a daylight filled, innovative, energy efficient building that moves us off fossil fuels and toward a renewable energy sources. This is an exciting moment. We have six options to consider, ad reno on either site, new or three story, building on either site and which site is preferred. Last Monday, Alicia made a motion seconded by Phoebe to remove ad reno option from further consideration as the preferred building option on either site. 
I made a mistake um, in my uh, less than adequate parliamentary role, two mistakes actually. We had a majority of people at the meeting and that's all we needed. We had six, uh, I counted six. When I went back and watched the video, there were actually eight votes, yes, to remove ad reno, one no, one couldn't make audio work and three missing. So unless someone wants to reconsider that option, we don't have to make a decision on ad reno today. We've already made and voted on it. That leaves us a decision on three versus two story and the site. Um, as you saw on the agenda, and I'm looking at any hands that are questioning this. Um, yeah, Paul. Can you just clarify what the vote was? It was to eliminate ad reno as an option, right? That we've it was already decided. Eliminate ad reno as an option. It was remove ad reno for further consideration on either site. So it was to remove it as an option. And there were eight yeses, one no, one who was there but wasn't able to vote, and three people who weren't at the meeting. So we have we have a record of that vote. Okay. So and and we will um, encapsulate that for the MSBA as we move forward. So today we're gonna to be focusing on three versus two and then on which site. And what I would like to do on the site is before we vote on the site, go around the room, calling on our educators first to get anyone's, everyone's view before, and then we can hear each other and then we would move to a vote. But to start us all off, Margaret is gonna show us the evaluation matrix. Um, and I have to thank Margaret because although she asked everyone to get it to her by Saturday morning, she was a trooper. And I see Phoebe's hand is up. She was a trooper and she was accept accepting uh, people's scoring as late as Sunday night. And I think one more came in this morning and she will do it. Um, so I'm going to have her put it up on the screen. But Phoebe, I see your hand is up. So um, I uh, let me call on you. Margaret, did you get my email? I just sent it a few minutes ago. I think the scoring down at the bottom was uh, not totaling right. I didn't see that, and Margaret's in control, so so she can she can uh, figure out. Um, and I don't have the Excel. I didn't have the Excel version. I just had the PDF. So Margaret, why don't you show it up on the screen? Um, I'm going to enlarge this so everybody can see it. And you need you need to at least some mice move it over. Can does that yep. work? Where everyone does it, did everyone have a visual? So Phoebe, are are you saying the bottom line totals don't when you added them up didn't work? Yeah, the the totals and the total of priority criteria. I think um, in the priority criteria there was uh, a couple that or one that added a couple of times. Um, and then I think the totals were just off by, I think one, if I'm, I don't have my own up, but. Okay, so so, so I'll, uh, I'll do a quick check on them, but Kathy, why don't you continue? Okay, so um, if I wanna make sure everyone can see it. Margaret, on my screen, the top is cut off. So if you can move it down just a little bit, a little well, bit more. <laughs> you know, and maybe we, so one of the things that I think um, come out of this um, is there, there was a lot of consistency when we, when we were marking it up and voting last time on and discussioning ranking. Um, but Margaret can talk a little bit about what we see here, but one of the things um, that comes out down at the bottom is some preferences about site and some preferences about three versus two. And I know people sent you in some comments, Margaret, so maybe you can just um, take over from here and make some observations as we're moving into uh, talking about the decisions we're making today. The other thing I do wanna say is that um, although there are differences in the bottom line, one can see what we've been saying is it's a difficult choice because uh, the, the, the scores are much closer than they might be if there was really a huge distinction between um, each of the things we're looking at. Ad Reno clearly comes out as the least preferred and we have eliminated that. 
So Margaret, if you want to make some comments. Yeah, you know, I think um, <clears throat> as Kathy said, the discussion, the level of detail here has been uh, incredible. The what struck me looking at these was I keep going back to the priority items. And so, so what's interesting on that is that on project costs, particularly once the ad renos are off the table, you know, the, there's really um, the, the level of difference, which is a couple million dollars in either procurement uh, construction delivery method is is extremely small. Obviously, optimizes energy efficiency, which is this line item, is a really important one that came through in the community forum. But we have the same across the board. So the really strong differentiators, um, where you see a like a big range in the scoring on the priority items, are these items. Where, where you're looking at the duration of the project and the impacts on teaching and learning, as well as the outdoor space for community use where there's you know, a pretty significant difference. So I think that's worth noting. Um, I also just wanna, um, and I think that lines up with, um, I'm just gonna switch slides briefly. Um, what we heard at the community forum, um, with the, the top priorities of the community forum and Donna and Danisco team, thank you for that. I thought it went really well. Um, outdoor space, optimizing energy efficiency, minimizing construction impact on students were really the top three. So I think your scoring of these lines up with the community preferences. Um, just to pivot to the comments that were received. Can everybody see this? Um, I may need to um, reshare this. Hang on a second. It, people should just raise their hand if they're having a, or speak up if they're having trouble seeing it. I can yeah. see it. I can see it see through F2. Okay, yeah, so it's a little bit longer. So this is the document I sent out last night that summarized the comments that we heard that were reflected in when the criteria that were sent in. So. Um, there were a couple of comments from Rupert about the scoring of public transit and access by walking. And I'll, Rupert, I'll come back to you in just a second. Um, there were a couple of comments on education about, uh, Kathy, I think you were questioning whether the items one, two, and three under educational should be priorities. Um, there were um, the question that Alicia raised on uh, at the last meeting about whether uh, Wildwood uh, should be, well, sir, whether educational benefits from location adjacencies was a positive. And there was, I think Alicia question, Mike responded that he thought that there was. Um, on this item three, Alicia had questioned whether the Hawthorne site should be considered. And Kathy um, responded in her comments that she thought it should be. Um, and then uh, the last comment, well, there was two here. Kathy, you questioned whether providing flexibility for expansion or future site risk as a result of climate change should be deleted. So um, I'll leave it up to the committee whether we want to talk about that a little more. And then Simone, last item, um, commented that um, she did not see a big dis distinction between the two sites. So those were the points of discussion that were raised in the criteria. Um, and we can revisit um, as many of them as seems appropriate, or we can leave this as a record of the fact that the committee doesn't agree on all items. Kathy, do you, should we have Rupert just talk about his comments? Sure, if, if Rupert would like to, um, and I, I don't know whether everyone has, if this was sent to everyone, so maybe you can take the screen down so we can. Sure. Um, so I, I welcome any comments or additional discussion about the matrix, um, and we can, uh, uh, one more person sent uh, their scores in today and Margaret can incorporate them so that we get a matrix that actually is an average to the extent people were, were 
different, um, the scores will just get averaged in. So Rupert, I see your hand is up. Thank you. Um, so um, I'm sure people can read my comments quicker than I can say them, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, in terms of uh, uh, item E, the um, equity and access, um, Wildwood, all three types of construction got classed as a un unpopular number one. Um, I don't think that that's accurate because uh, it puts it in the same uh, the same category as the adrenos uh, where construction is going on in the building structure while students are there. Um, and I'd also like to point out that uh, in both Fort River and Wildwood, the students are inside the building and construction inside the building is completed uh, for the fall of 26. I also um, recommend that uh, Fort River's uh, disruption index uh, be reduced from a four to a three because uh, there's going to be an uncountable number of trucks bringing in fill uh, for a very long time and, uh, and getting it distributed and compacted, I think uh, is not what we would call highly favorable uh, to the educational process. Um, I could stop there and then when we get to the, um, the transportation side, maybe chime in again. So, so what, I, what I'd like to propose is that we spend not that much time on the matrix so we can get to the voting. So I think anyone should highlight um, either areas where what they saw they would want to potentially change the scoring or there's a difference of opinion and um, we, we can reach a final score. This is meant to be a tool. So it's not making the decision for us. It's guiding, guiding our thoughts in a way it's collecting everyone. So um, I, you know, I've not been part of trying to do this complicated a matrix with 13 people before, <laughs> um, but we can, if we want to change some aggregate scores, we can do a final scoring for the record. Um, and I would just propose people raise their hand if they wanna make any more comments, but I would like to get to the, to the two decisions we have to make today to leave as much time for that. Um, so I- Kathy, can I just add, sure. Phoebe, you and I should talk. I just checked the math on these and they're correct. So, you know, we should maybe have a follow-up conversation, but I don't believe, if anyone wants to look at those totals, there is an error there. Okay, and you know there was there were you know there was four and five point spreads on a few few things. So if if and there's one more score that will come in that may narrow them more. But I think it it highlighted that we have there's not a. a one preferred solution across everything doesn't jump off the page, but there's clearly preferences. So Rupert, I see your hand is up and Sean's hand. Rupert. I just wanted to ask at some point if uh, uh, Margaret could sort of walk through the process of filling in the last rows of the matrix, how that uh, worked out with everyone sort of submitting their scores separately. Thank you. Kathy, do you want me to respond to that now? Sure. I think I think what you did is you took everyone's score and you averaged them. Is that correct? Yeah, I'll just show you what the backup looks like. So this is what I did in the in the spreadsheet. If I did not send you all the live spreadsheet, but um, you know, here's here's the the page that I sent you. Behind that, there's a page where each option is listed. All of you are listed and then the, the numbers are listed. And then in this column, it's doing the averages of them. Does that make sense? And then that pulls over to the cover sheet. And, and you did that, she's just showing you the ones we flagged as priority, but she did that for every line in the matrix. Is that correct, Mark? Right, exactly. Well, I did that, I did that for the, the site and community. Yeah. So I kept the, criteria, the ratings above based on our last right. meeting. Right. So this is only for those six items, seven items. Yeah. Okay, so I'll take that down. Sean and Phoebe. Thanks, Kathy. So uh, one difference between my personal 
grid and, and um, the compilation is the cost. Um, I know $2 million doesn't seem like a big spread between options at Port River and Wildwood, but I think when we're talking about a debt exclusion, one that's you know much higher than it was the last time around, I think the $2 million is a, is a big deciding factor and should be something that differentiates between the two options. So I had a one point difference between um, sort of the, the lower band of cost, the $95, $96 million costs, and then that second band, which was $97, $98 million. Um, so that would be one thing I would suggest if, if there's still time to discuss. Um, Phoebe. Um, so uh, let me go to, to uh, the cost thing first because it's fresher in my mind. Um, I, uh, and I think I said this, I can't remember when I said it, um, but I would love to figure out as opposed to talking to about them uh, about the cost um, or maybe not instead of, but in addition to talking about the cost as a lump sum, I'd love to know what it translates to. And I think that we should talk about it when we talk to our general community about what that looks like in realistic terms across the span of the building, across the span of the amount of time we're paying for that, across the span of uh, taxpayers in town. Um, because I think that you know, $1 million sounds like a lot. And then when we compare that to, um, you know, what we get and time here over a period of time, I think it, I think that's where I found in when I ranked that category, you know, it, it didn't feel as big of a difference to me. Um, in terms of the comments uh, that were I think it was Rupert on on uh, duration and disruption and that kind of stuff. I'm actually pretty comfortable with what we have. Um, I think that the the reality is because of the sizes of the spaces. I think that there is a very big difference in disruption level, um, and as well as um, I know we we have talked. We've sort of in different ways talked differently about how long people are on site, and we've talked more about how long the actual building itself is under construction, but I think there's also something to be said for um, how long they're on, you know, construction is happening on site in general. Um, and so I don't know, I'm wondering if we can add, I know that we have up at the top, allows students to fully occupy building in fall 2026, but we don't have anything there that indicates when they're going to be, when all contractors are gonna be off site. So if we could put that in there so that we can see what we're talking about, because I think when we get to disruption, um, those sorts of things, there is a big difference there that we need to take into account. Thanks. Um, Angelica, just one thing I wanna point out, we do have duration there just as a measure, Phoebe. So that was what that was there for, but we can come back to that. Angelica? Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, uh, no, I just wanted to agree with Phoebe's comments and also say in terms of the aggregate totals, just to note that mine are not included. As you all know, I'm traveling right now within Ecuador and no longer have laptop access. So my totals will probably uh, just change some things slightly there, but I know that the voting is more important, but I just wanted to note that, that my totals are not included because I don't have laptop access at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Thank you for being able to join us. <laughs> Paul. Yeah, so two things. One is, um, I believe the tool, I mean, we could spend multiple meetings on refining the tool. And I think it, I think you said earlier, Kathy, that this is a tool. Um, and we all reframe, we looked at it in our own way that ultimately what the tool is, is supposed to do is to help us make a decision individually. So I don't, I think it's not productive of, for us to spend a ton of time on the tool because I have valued certain things higher than other people have, I'm sure. And, and vice versa. And there are things in there that I think are duplicative that give extra points to things that I wouldn't give extra points to, but they seem to be the same thing, asking it twice. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't wanna get into that level of detail because I think this is informative to me. It was actually helpful to go through the exercise of filling out these the, the matrix. So I think it was a valuable, valuable, but again, I see it as something that informed my opinion and not, we're not gonna, our goal isn't to reach consensus on the tool because I think we'll be here for yeah. days to do that. <laughs> Um, and I think what, you know, I think what I would love to do is move to the first decision point we have to make, which is whether we're going two stories or three stories. I think that's an important conversation and that we can probably dispense with that pretty quickly. Okay. 
it, with that suggestion, if people are comfortable, I, I agree with that. And Margaret has one more set of scores that came in so she can at the after this meeting, she can send us a final if Angel Angelica manages to get um, to a computer, we would get everyone's and uh, and if anyone wants to revisit uh, anything they score, and I as I think this is a tool. This is we can make a decision without having this final tool, and then we'll have it to put in the document that uh, the design team. I don't see any protests for that. So then I think we'll move to the first decision, and that is, um, are, are we? Having eliminated ad reno, we're into a new building. Is the new building a two or three floor building? And Margaret, if you would just put up, um, I drafted some motions. So basically this would be a motion. Um, we've already done the ad reno. So two versus three, this would be a motion to select three story slash or two story building as the building option on either site. That's the way the wording of the motion would be. So, and then the next would be to move to the site. And then finally, we would just be looking at a combination of uh, this story building on this site as the preferred solution, which preferred solution is the MSBA wording. So I thought we might as well use it in our motion. Um, so I think we can take that down, but that would be the motion. And so what I'd like to do is hear any initial comments or discussion about three versus two? And I, um, particularly from our educators, um, any thoughts about it on, and I could see what the scoring, there was in the scoring, there was a preference for three, but just wanting to document what we're thinking about this. Mike? Um, so first I just wanna ask a process question then I'll jump in with my thoughts, depending on your okay. question. Would you prefer us to start with a motion and then discuss the merits of that motion? Or would you prefer to have a broad conversation before a motion is made? I'm comfortable either way. I just wanna get a sense from Robert's rules. What would you prefer? Um, I, think, I think we can do it either way. If someone wants to make a motion, if they're ready to make a motion on this one, we, you could make a motion and then we could discuss it. That would be fine. Um, okay. uh, if you, someone puts that screen back up, I'm happy to make the motion as, okay. as drafted. Um, and then uh, if it's okay, uh, comment on that motion or the perhaps others need to comment on it. I need to be refreshed with Robert's rules, but I will move that uh, we select a three-story building as the preferred new building option on either site. You second that. Second. Can I just, for the record, who seconded it? Me. 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 Okay. Okay, so we can take that down, Mar Margaret, from the screen. So now we are open for a discussion. Um, you know, I think people speaking to the motion or if anyone has a different opinion, but the rationale on, um, I know, Tammy, you spoke actually quite eloquently about it a week ago, but but I, I would love to hear your thoughts again. And I know, Allison, both of you have been in the meetings with teachers, as has Mike. So Mike? Thank you. So yeah, I'm in favor of that. Uh, the motion I made and the rationale is um, kind of Threefold, one is footprint. You know, we want to maximize the green space. Three stories has a smaller footprint than two stories. So, you know, from that perspective, it just makes sense in terms of, you know, maximizing after a play space and, and natural space. I think the second one is just the adjacencies piece. Uh, having visited the school uh, with you and some others, Kathy, but also just talking to my colleagues in other districts, the idea of having sort of kindergarten and first grade on one floor, second and third grade on another, fourth and fifth grade uh, on another, uh, just because it is a larger school creates that sense of community and grade level banding that I think makes a lot of sense. And, and people want that small school feel. That was something that uh, from the beginning and, and having visited a school with that was three stories, I think it promoted that because each grade level only had two grade levels. Each floor only had two grade levels on it. And you could see the connections that were occurring. And, and the third one is just um, kind of, getting around the building uh, and the noise that comes from it, having a more vertical alignment versus a horizontal alignment. I want quiet hallways, right? Uh, and I want quiet hallways in a way that doesn't feel like we're, you know, putting undue pressure on kids to do that. I want spaces outside the classroom that are usable. And one way to do that is to make sure that kids can navigate the building, not going down long hallways uh, like we currently have, where it just, that's the only option to get to where you need to go. 
Um, so I saw that um, in a school that was uh, overpopulated from the day one, and the hallways were much quieter than any of our schools because of that, that factor. So those are the three factors for me that uh, would make three-story building make sense for us on either site. Thank you. Any other comments that people want to offer? I'm looking for hands. Yeah, I, Angelica. I just wanted to add also that for our students with special needs, the great banding, it helps maximize inclusion opportunities, which is a really important thing that I valued. Thank you. I mean, I, I think any of these comments, it helps um, the Danisco team when they're writing up how we made our decision. You know, what, uh, I'll offer just one observation I have from um, a school our children were in where there were two age groups in each classroom. And I think this putting fourth and fifth together, you, you get some cross age um, modeling and opportunities for teachers where we had those outside in this design, which is very exciting for the, the, that outside the classroom space for activities, the small, um, you don't have to, you could have two, two different groups if you wanted to, it gets a lot, it seems a lot of flexibility in this design. And one person whose child had been in the Chinese Emergent School said, the older kids couldn't wait to get on that top floor because that gave them status. It was, you know, it's like a, this is our space. So it was like a, a hooray. So I, 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 I strongly support this too. Any other comments? And if not, uh, Tammy and Allison both have their hands up. Tammy, and then Allison. Um, I'm uh, getting better, so excuse my voice. <clears throat> it's better than what it was. Um, you know, I think an unintended outcome of having a three-story building <clears throat> is that we can see teachers also getting to know their students for two years, thinking about this idea of looping, um, which is something uh, both I've done and see the benefits of it but also research supports as well. And while we may not necessarily move to that, it would also help uh, both teachers and students develop relationships with one another in a way that does not happen or wouldn't happen to the degree that a two-story would. Um, <clears throat> I also think that using the, the space that out of the classroom adjacency spaces would also prove extremely beneficial in a way that wouldn't happen to the degree that it would in a two-story building. Um, so those are two points that are really important to me as an educator um, and as an ed educational leader um, of, of, and being part of this, this committee. Thank you. Thank you. Allison. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly with the statements that have been made. I don't see uh, benefit to two stories versus three stories in terms of the pedagogical reason. Um, and I believe if we are going to lean towards a site that is already predicted to be more expensive, I think you're going to have to focus on construction um, that is going to be more efficient. And uh, from what I understand, the three story will be more efficient than the two story. And I think that will be an example of the committee uh, taking into account uh, costs if we are going with a site that will lead to maybe more costs. Thank you. I don't see any other hands. So I think we are ready to vote. Um, if, if seeing no objection, I'm going to, I actually did a sheet this time to make sure I didn't miss anybody. <laughs> and it's it's organized alphabetically by last name. So, but I'm just gonna call out the first names. And if you're in favor, you vote yes. If you're not a favor, no. And you do have the right to abstain if you don't want to vote. Angelica. Yes. Paul. Yes. Simone. Yes. Allison. Yes. Ben. Yes. Sean. Yes. Phoebe. 
Yes. Mike. Yes. Rupert. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Kathy is a yes. Tammy. Yes. Alicia. Yes. I think I got everyone and it is unanimous. Um, and I want to note that Allison, as everyone knows, Allison has joined us. We are all, we managed to all be here on this Monday morning. Thank you very much. So now we turn to the sites discussion. Um, uh, Mike had asked uh, what the process would be. I think for this, it would be good to go around the room first before we make a motion. And what I would like to do, um, as long as I don't put people too much on the spot, is start with the educators. So both Allison, uh, Tammy, and Mike, to have you speak to what you're thinking is on the sites. And after that, I will just go alphabetically. Um, but I just wanted uh, the people who are, two people who are living in these, the two buildings we have now, so they really know the sites well and people are working um, to make any comments. Um, on your thinking. So uh, I'll start actually with Tammy and then Allison and then Mike. So Mike's comments don't influence either Tammy or Allison. Tammy. No pressure. Okay. Um, there's something about being here at Fort River for as many years as I have that I do love the grounds. Um, I do think that uh, a building on the Fort River site has some advantages over the, the potential of Wildwood, including um, more green space for outdoor learning opportunities. Uh, I think I'm actually going to write notes now. They're around here. Um, I also think it would allow more community members to also access the grounds in a way that might feel somewhat fami more familiar to them. Furthermore, when I when I consider um, the the construction um, and the impact that it's going to have on the either site, I feel like in some it, it, based on what I've heard and reviewed, it seems as if Fort River and construction will have a, a wider buffer than it would at Wildwood. Um, and, and I think that, you know, construction can be extremely distracting for a lot of different reasons, both for our teachers, as well as for community members, as well as and our most vulnerable population, our students, right? Why we're all here. Um, and so trying to mitigate that to the greatest extent possible, I think is, is really important as well. So, in that way, um, I think that Fort River has sort of taken a, a bit of a lead for me. Um, as it refers to foot traffic, I do think Wildwood would have uh, has a better advantage there um, over Fort River. Um, although I'm not really clear on some of the new construction that will be happening in the, the Fort River area. Um, and Finally, as it comes to just traffic patterns, I think neither of them are great. I do think maybe Wildwood has a, a little bit more of an advantage over Fort River in that regard, um, just in terms of vehicular uh, or vehicle traffic. Thank you, Tammy. Um, Allison. Yeah, um, so I'm, I, I feel like I need to share a little bit of my history on this, on this kind of work. Um, I lived for 15 years in a very small town in New Hampshire. And um, something that would happen sometimes with construction projects where uh, there were multiple options. If, if, a, if a group was looking at a more expensive option and went with that expensive option because of some type of benefit, the same people who advocated for that more expensive option as the costs increase became angry and said, no, we need to shut down the entire project because it's too expensive. So I fully understand that Fort River has a benefit over Wildwood in terms of the space and grounds that they have. I also understand that it's predicted to be more money than the Wildwood site. And if our community is willing to spend the money to make that site work, I think it's great. But I hate for the idea 
given my experience, in which people who advocate for one thing then turn around and say, it's too expensive, we're gonna shut the project down. So I am wholeheartedly voting in favor of, of Fort River with the hope that the same people who are advocating it for it now will still stand by it as it, that we see costs go up because 2 million is to me the base. That's it, the most that we're saying right now. And it's possible it could be more than that. And I, we need a new building. It's just, it's more important to get this building done. So if we go with the more expensive option, I so hope that everybody here can support the costs that are gonna be needed to make that new building work regardless of what's happening. So I speak with passion on this because I've seen it happen in small town politics before. And I really don't want us to hear people start saying, well, my taxes, my taxes, my taxes, when I'm telling you, we have to get a new building. So I, I'm very impassioned about that part because money is cheaper today than it's gonna be 10 years from now. And the building I'm working in is not gonna be safer for me 10 years from now. So I just, I, I had my piece. I'm gonna stop talking now, <laughs> but that's how I feel. Thank you very much. Mike. Yeah, I agree with everything Tammy and Allison said. I'll, I'll put my own just quick two cents on it. So in terms of Wildwood advantages, um, I do think the adjacency middle school, I know other people on this committee have disagreed. I think that is real. It's real in terms of shared staffing. I think it's real in terms of safety, reunification site, right? Things that, that Tammy, Allison, and I worry about that perhaps are less visible to other people uh, in the public that, um, you know, that, that's an advantage. Um, I think walking possibilities, I've, I've, I've had residents uh, meet with me, uh, multiple residents in the last three weeks who uh, either currently walk their kids to Wildwood or plan to walk their kids to Wildwood when the kids are become school age, who are heartbroken uh, about the, the possibility of not being able to do that. Some are saying, I'm going to sell my house and move, right? That was, that's a direct quote uh, from a, a resident in our community. And however many people walk now, the reality is Wildwood's a more walkable site. There's more ways that are safe walking, safe to walk to to Wildwood than there are to Fort River. Fort River's bordered on three sides by major roads. There, there's a real neighborhood behind Wildwood that allows for uh, easy access from walking, biking, things like that, uh, that are safer. Um, and I like the adjacency of the middle school. You know, we've underutilized it perhaps in the past. This would be an opportunity to revision that. We have had some kindergarten classes who had partner classes to middle school. So there are some positive examples of things that have happened. It happens to have a really nice auditorium that, you know, would be great for some performances at Wildwood. And you can imagine walking down the hill for that. And um, so, so and, and having an accessible path built would be good for the community, you know, from Wildwood to the middle school, as well as the fields down there. Yes, that's a cost. Um, it's probably a cost we should be talking about regardless of whether wherever this school is built that you know it's a path that some people can access and some people can't and you know i think when we think about access those things are real on the flip side everything that tammy and allison said is true about fort river in terms of playing fields you know, in my belief the construction impact you know it's going to be large both places but to look at a map of wildwood and see that there's not green space usable green space uh, for a couple of years when you think about the population and who attends wildwood that, that's a huge deal for me, you know, and so uh, I'm not saying the points that are positive about Wildwood to disagree with Tammy and Allison, because at the end of the day, I'll end in the same place. It's, I'm saying them because I think it was a hard decision. You know, I know some people feel like it was a slam dunk for me. It's not a slam dunk either way. Um, I didn't experience it that way. And, you know, I'll have two caveats. So uh, plus 100 to what Allison said in terms of caveats of cost, right? Um, I, I think, uh, you know, I've said this publicly before, so there's no surprise that if, if it ends up being, oh, well, we can do the Fort River site, but you need to start cutting things, right? You know, that's not the equation. Right now, we're trying to choose the best site. $2 million, yes, it's as small as a percent of the project. $2 million is a lot of money, right? Uh, and $2 million compounded by interest is, is even more money. So I am fearful uh, that the further we get into this project, we are making compromises uh, that would Re we would want to reevaluate this matrix. Uh, if it's Fort River, oh, but without these things and Wildwood with $2 million more things, right, that would, might tip the scale. So I think if we are going to vote Fort River, I, I guess I want to 
make sure that everyone on the committee is willing to fight to maintain the educational programming we need and not make compromises later. Um, so just maybe piggybacking on Allison's point, it can't be, well, you know, this one's two more million dollars more expensive. So therefore we don't have X, Y, and Z that we need, right? I think it's, we just have to go, yeah, we're going, it's gonna be more expensive and we're not cutting costs because of that. Uh, that would compromise some of the educational programming. I think the second uh, caveat, I guess I could get three, uh, is about the fields, right? So there's been some suggestions, some uh, emails I've received from elected officials in the community that say, oh, you know, why don't we do one field at a time and the CPA committee in the future could, you know, we could do that over time outside the building project. And, and, and I, my point, uh, I'll only vote for Fort River, I'm just gonna put it out bluntly, is if, if it's the whole project and that includes the fields. Um, if the CPA wants to contribute to, defer, to uh, defray cost along the way of this, like that's awesome, really appreciate it. And it would be, I think a wonderful idea, but uh, I don't wanna bank on a CPA committee four years from now making a certain decision to give us the fields that we need for a school of 575. So like, I think it's the whole enchilada or we should have a different conversation. And I think the last thing is the traffic. I agree with what Tammy said. The traffic's gonna be a little tough both places. I was at Fort River when it was about the size of as a teacher uh, th that we're talking about here. Um, and, and I suspect, although I don't have evidence, I wanna say that I suspect that more traffic improvements may be needed to make this site work better. And, you know, that aren't necessarily accounted for. And I think, you know, the other thing I wanna commit to if I vote for, for Fort River is again, we're not cutting based on the $2 million delta between Fort River and Wildwood. We're committing to the fields being done part and parcel of the project and that we're committing to working to resolve the traffic, even if there is a cost that will be incurred. So those are like sort of my three caveats or things I need to hear from the committee before I take my personal vote. Um, you know, I'm not trying to edit the vote language, Kathy, because I think that would be silly, but, but I just, I'm glad we didn't make a motion on the first one. So thank you uh, for sharing it that way. Because uh, I need to hear a little, little more about the committee, about their commitments before I, I kind of finalize my vote. And I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, the rest I'm just going to call in alphabetical order. So uh, by last name. So Angelica, you're, you're up next. Thanks. Um, well, I just wanted to thank uh, the whole committee for this process, because it certainly is not an easy decision. And I certainly uh, felt uh, was leaning a certain way at the beginning. And the last few meetings have been really decisive for me in terms of leaning towards another way. But I appreciated that that part of that transformation in my own thinking came from really all the reports, all the information we received and all of the rich discussion that this committee was having. Um, I would say that for me, one of the big concerns initially was the traffic issue. Um, that is still a really big concern since uh, the traffic situation is still a problem for our schools. But I think last meeting, was really decisive for me because in hearing more about the disruptions of construction, I feel like the Fort River site is going to be a more optimal choice for our children. Um, our children have gone through a lot through COVID. The uh, idea uh, that they would have the equipment closer to them and have that level of disruption was to me really a decisive factor, along with the fields and the playing fields. Again, just having that opportunity to still have access to them during the construction was really, really important. And now in hearing the discussion um, and the concerns that Allison and Tammy and, um, and Mike have raised, I'm also really concerned to know that this is a commitment about uh, the whole package. Uh, why? Because I know initially, before I even joined the committee, there was a lot of discussion about the square footage and trying to cut costs according to square footage. And then there's a change in that um, to making sure that we have this uh, Fort River site. So uh, it, it's, it's, if we're going to commit, we're going to commit. And it's not about going back to any sort of uh, compromises uh, because of the prices, because the reality is that these prices will raise because costs of material and things are racing. As we've heard, this is not a set number. And I appreciated the reality and of the of, of the cost that uh, Dinesco presented to us. So I am leaning definitely for forever, but uh, I, I expect the commitment um, to the price and uh, that our committee, our community will also be committed to this as well. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. This, this is a first for me. I've never had someone from the Amazonian rainforest participating with <laughs> um, birds in the background. Um, so I really do appreciate um, 
the members of this committee. It's been really, um, I think we all have brought diverse, different perspectives to it. And I've really uh, found that to be helpful to me in forming my opinion. Um, I do appreciate from the public as well, the the comments that, especially the comments that have been you know, thoughtful and um, helped us to look at some technical data. Um, and I thought that those were valuable to me, um, you know, uh, so, and I also appreciated the comments that we got. And we've received many comments where people said, we trust you as a committee. And I think that that was, I, I, I appreciated those comments, especially because um, I think this committee has really put in a lot of hours and, and a tribute to our chair who has led us through this process and a, a very um, difficult thing that, that got energized um, in, a, in a sometimes negative way. Um, my belief is that both sites can work well and I will support both sites, whichever site the committee chooses, because I think we are blessed with two sites. If any community had either one of these sites available to them, or if we had one of these sites available to us, I think we'd all be rallying around saying, let's make this site work. Neither site is disqualified. I think that's really important for us to believe because we're, however, I'm not sure where this vote is going to go, um, but whichever site we land on, I will support the site uh, as a town manager. Um, my two things that I said earlier were traffic and finances. And then I sort of have a third thing. Um, so in terms of traffic, I think it's, a, I think it's um, very clear that Wildwood is a much better location for traffic. You're not bracketed by three major roads uh, that, where traffic is just snarled every morning when school's not in session. Um, and I go through there, I live, you know, half a mile from Fort River. I live about a mile from Wild, Wildwood. I know the area. Um, it, and I've, you know, been, I, I go to the both sites frequently. So I know the sites. Um, there is no easy fix for the traffic around Fort River. Um, if, you know, to reference Mike, if he's talking about the whole enchilada, if that includes traffic, we have not factored in the costs involved with the, with the significant traffic change that would have to be made on, at East Street. Wildwood, there'd be some traffic improvements made at the entrance of the driveway onto Strong Street, much different situation, I think, in my, in my estimation and talking with town engineers as well. So um, I think that, um, and also the other thing, I forget who said, someone talked, talk, maybe uh, Rupert about the safe routes to schools. When we talk about walking buses and things like that, I think Wildwood is much more amenable to having people access it because you can, there are multiple access points through the regional schools um, off of East Pleasant Street. There's multiple ways to get there. There, there is, you know, you always have to cross something to get to, to Fort River. Um, so that, so traffic to me was number one, was one major priority. And I think that lands on Wildwood for, in, a, in a pretty unclear way for me. Um, the other one is, is finances. We talked about finances and uh, I, I agree with everyone that $2 million is, is, is not insignificant. Um, some people say it's only $2 million, but boy, you know, we're arguing, we're arguing over much smaller amounts um, today, actually. Um, I look at this with four major capital projects that we have to build. Every one of them has a budget. We, our mission is to build all four. They all have um, needs. Our school is our number one need for by everyone's metrics. Um, but we have put budget constraints on all of the other budget pro projects. Uh, we're going to be looking at this project with as a fiscal haw hawk. I think we owe that to our taxpayers. So uh, you know, I will disagree with my esteemed colleagues on the school side that there are going to you know we have to look at the numbers and we have to pay attention to that. It's unfair to the rest of the community not to. Um, the um, the reason I choose Wildwood on finances is not just the numbers, but that the Wildwood site has been has been voted on. We also need a debt exclusion um, to pass this. Otherwise, this building doesn't get built. Um, Wildwood has been passed by majority vote at the ballot box twice. We have a, some proven track record that this site has been approved by the voters two times. We don't know if the voters have approved Fort River. So I'd look at that as, as a fact that I like to have. Things have changed over the past, you know, five years. Um, it's been millions of dollars more now. I get that. Um, people change. I get that. But we do at least have that piece of information. 
and I'll try to be brief now. Um, my and then I, I'm not an engineer. I just have an intuitive um, concern about the high water table at Fort River that we have to build up the entire site by two feet or whatever it is. And I feel like just intuitively, I would say being on the top of the hill is better. It's a beautiful location. Um, and I look at this, um, I totally get the educator saying, wow, two years of disruption. I think there are ways to manage the construction at Wildwood in a better way than has been presented. Um, but I, you know, but I do trust our engineer saying that if it is built at, at Fort River, the engineering can work. So I trust on that. But in, in my gut, I sort of like, wow, I don't know if I'd want to, I, I worry about the water table there. And I think this is a building that we're looking at for 50 plus years down the road. And so some disruption early on is, is worth it. Um, so, and then just to add what Allison said that I believe anybody who's written us signed a petition or anything like that, we expect and uh, we'll be hoping and expecting that you will be supporting this project throughout the duration because we need everybody's support because this is gonna be a big ask to the taxpayers to say, we wanna build this building. So my, if I'm, I'm landing on the Wildwood site, but I, am, I will um, support either site. Simone. I agree with what Paul said. Cost and safety are my main concerns as well. Um, Wildwood is 2 million cheaper and that is a lot of money. Um, and the safety with the traffic, not only the traffic, actually the high water table. Um, I know that can be mitigated in the short term and probably the long term, but at what cost? Um, so those are my main concerns. That's what I'm thinking about. I most certainly would support either site as well, um, but that's my thoughts. Thank you. Ben. Yeah, so, so I have my pros and cons and, and the pro, I'll just, I'll just be blunt about it from, from day one. My pro has been new school building. That, that trumps everything for me. So <clears throat> either site will, will work for me but so I, I kind of like delved into the cons, right? That's, that's where the differences were for me. And like the, uh, the idea of, of pedestrian safety in the surrounding area, I mean, that's, that's huge. Like worst case scenario in that is um, like non-quantifiable, right? Like it, it's bad, right? Like, so, th so this, the safety aspect is a, a really huge one for me, but also there's the, the cost factor. So like, a few months ago, we were talking about cutting every square foot that we could off of the uh, special ed section of the building to save tens of thousands up to maybe a hundred thousand. And I just want to correct everyone. We're talking about the $2 million difference. It's two and a quarter million dollar difference. $2,254,000 difference. Very significant, right? And that's, that's today's money. Right? At, at, at the point that, you know, shovel touches dirt, it could be a $3 million difference or, or even more. And then also... To Paul's point about the uh, mitigating uh, traffic safety concerns around the area, that's not factored in, right? So it's 2.25 right now, plus whatever it costs to make the surrounding area safer. And I don't, I haven't seen anything that, that convinces me that it makes it as safe as the Wildwood site. And so speaking of the Wildwood site, my negatives there are the uh, construction disruption, which I mean, I'm, you know, close proximity to the building, the existing building, right? Right. That kind of takes away. Uh, you, you have that, you know, the sound factor, the noise factor, and it it kind of cuts the green space for that that amount of time. I've had the the privilege of seeing there's it's Pleasant Valley Elementary School is right down the street from where my brother lives, and it's it's basically the same model that we're looking at, right? Like the they've had to cut and move, you know, playground spaces and all that, and uh, Looking at how that project has, has worked, you know, you kind of think like, is, is the juice worth the squeeze? I mean, we're talking about a 50 year project that's gonna take two or three years of construction. I, I think the disruption is potentially worth it. I also don't wanna like make light of the fact that, I, I forget who said it, but the fact that our kids have been disrupted for the last couple of years and that kind of adds to it. That means that we will have like a generation that has gone all the way through elementary school disrupted. 
right? So to me, it's it's shades of gray. I, the safety and cost, like other folks have said, I mean, it's it's really hard to write off easily, you know. But like I said, what I want is a new school building. I think I've been pretty clear about that for a while now. And whichever site gets gets chosen, we have a new school building and that would make me happy. So long as people are willing to support that all the way through. Sean. So I agree with uh, what everybody said, um, especially what Ben just said. I thought he made a lot of good points. Um, it, I kind of, there's so many comparable criteria that I go to the long-term and what can't be changed about either of these sites. Um, I think Wildwood's location, being close to the middle school and the high school, that's something that can't be changed. Um, the, the lower risk from climate change and the proximity to the Fort River, those are things that if we build a school there, it can't be changed. So if something happens in the future there, we're sort of stuck with it and we have to deal with it. Um, and I think you know the, the, the issues that we have with the Wildwood site in terms of the green space and the disruption, um, the green space I think is something we, through agreements with the middle school or with work on the Hawthorne property, we can address that I think, we can provide more green space. Um, and then the traffic at, um, at Fort River, I just, I haven't seen what we can do to really mitigate that. Um, I know there's been some proposals put out by PAR, but I haven't seen what that will do long-term to really impact the, the ratings that those intersections have had. So um, I think long-term to me, Wildwood is a site that makes most sense. Um, and, and then when you throw in the lower cost, um, being the finance director, I sort of lean that way. So I think both sites are really, are viable sites. I'll support both sites, um, but right now I'm leaning towards uh, Wildwood. Phoebe. Thanks. Um, so I, I, uh, I get the traffic at Fort River. I mean, I think that, I think that something needs to be done down there regardless, right? Um, I, I also, however, though, think that in terms of the green space aspect and you know using the middle school using hawthorne i think those are things that if we're also comparing that to cost we haven't looked at really at, as this committee um one of the things that we did look at was how you know was getting a path down to the middle school fields um and that was sort of that was sort of um pushed out at the beginning because of the cost factor. So I'm that to me is a little bit confusing to be to be looking at that now if it was you know if I think that it needed more I think that we could have done a better job about discussing those things earlier on and including those in this because if we're looking at this as you know on the committee, I, I am wholly in favor of supporting this entire project from start to finish, you know, including costs that come up, all of those kinds of things. And I think that um, as we talk about the things that need to be done, that would need to be done at Wildwood um, that are not included in what we're looking at at cost um, right now, I think that there's a few things. I think Hawthorne, I think path down to the middle school to get some green space for our, you know, 575 uh, elementary kids, I think um, a roundabout, I, I'm, I'm not as sure about the numbers that we saw last week um, for a roundabout for whatever we need to do to make that site more accessible from, you know, not from the middle school side, but from Strong Street side. Um, those are not included in here. I think um, disruption duration, uh, I'm sorry, um, construction duration, the disruption of that, I think that is kind of a big thing given, you know, I'm glad somebody else said it because I was thinking it as well, especially coming off of such a crazy last few years. Um, I think to ask, you know, many of our kids and kids coming in to, to deal with that for a longer period of time seems really hard for me when we have the option of having less disruption in another site. Um, I think that, um, I think in terms of, uh, expansion possibilities, we're not looking at that now, but we are looking at 50 plus years of having this, this building and this site be our, you know, one of two elementary schools in town. Um, I, I can't imagine how we would then 
come back to the table later and figure out what to do on the Wildwood site um, to, you know, I mean, the idea is that we make uh, Amherst desirable for people and families to come. And, and I can't see how we would do that um, without the space that Fort River uh, sort of provides us. Um, I'm, I, hear also what everybody is, what, what people are saying about the water table. And I don't know that I'm uh, as concerned. One, I'm not, you know, maybe I, I just don't know as much as other people, but I think that if we can do everything that has been recommended to us um, to raise the site and make it uh, more usable and to deal with those water issues, I think that, um, you know, we need to trust the experts on that. Um, and, and uh, kind of move forward with um, knowing that we have the best intentions and that we're doing everything possible to do. Um, yeah, I think that's good for now. Oh, actually, sorry, one more thing. Um, I think that the last thing I wanna say is for all of the uh, people that have written to us uh, in the community, I wanna also bring up that the large majority of those people um, have, uh, have asked us to to vote for Fort River in this. Um, and so I, I want to take that into account. And it is by all means, not all of them, but it is a large, it is a significant portion of the ones that that have spoken out to us. Um, and so I think we need to, we also need to be thinking about that. Um, and assuming and asking them to support us through this whole process as well. Thank you. Thank you, Phoebe. Rupert. Thank you. Um, I'm I'm very concerned if we um, choose the Fort River site that we will spend decades and decades asking ourselves why did we put an elementary school right next to arguably one of the worst intersections in town, and why did we choose to put an elementary school where it's so problematic to get the school buses in and out of the site um, for. Uh, I'm sure many people have seen uh, there are quite a number of drivers who wish to get ahead of the school buses to make their drive quicker. Um, it's not particularly a safe exercise. The more things get jammed up with the buses, I think we can expect more unsafe uh, uh, bad decisions. Um, the, the proposal to improve Southeast Street by uh, lengthening the, uh, the third lane doesn't help us get in and out of the school at all because there's only room for one bus between the exit driveway and the intersection. Lengthening the lane doesn't get us any more buses out on the Southeast Street. Uh, I think it's a horrible, horrible problem. And I think it's a big mistake to go that way. On top of that, I think that if we are concerned about safety, uh, every now and then it happens that a child gets dysregulated and becomes a runner. And I think that uh, having the school at Fort River puts that kid at much higher risk uh, than at Wildwood, uh, where it's much easier uh, to catch up with the kid and to do so safely. Um, lastly, um, I think we need to take the long view. Um, when I imagine uh, the elementary school at, at the Wildwood site, um, it's, it's in a sort of a residential area. It feels like you're in the community with the school. I don't get that feeling at Fort River and I don't expect to get that feeling in the future at Fort River. I think there'll be more and more traffic and it'll be more and more isolated. Uh, so I urge folks to uh, reconsider and uh, think hard and long uh, before selecting Fort River. Thank you. Jonathan. My apologies, I wasn't paying attention to where we were alphabetically. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's the last name alphabetical. It's, it's yeah, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> good morning. Um, my tendency is to, to su support the Fort River site from uh, the perspective of the disruption as a parent, um, a parent of a kiddo who often gets uh, distracted. And <laughs> um, I, I just think that the long, the long-term effects and coming out of COVID, I think that's a better choice. I do think that the Fort River site is is um, manageable when it comes to 
uh, water issues. We have uh, modern engineering approaches that can address them. Um, and uh, you know, there's been a lot of back and forth uh, in today's conversation. I don't want to repeat too many things, um, but I think long term, it's 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 a flexible site. Um, and but in the end, we have two good sites, uh, and I care passionately <laughs> about us getting a new school um, and and getting to the end uh, in in a couple years time and and having that new school. So I'm going to passionately support whichever choice uh, moves forward. And I want to thank everybody for their time. This has been a, you know, this is a long-term process that we're going through and we may feel like we're at, you know, a kind of a big point here today, which we are, um, but there's a lot of work to do between now and the end. Um, and uh, regardless of whichever cho site is chosen, we're going to have to work on the cost piece from now until the very end costs uh, in the construction industry are going up. While it looks like uh, a clear cost today, uh, you know, cost numbers are variable. Um, cost numbers are going to be variable on either site. And I would ask the community, regardless of the choice made today, uh, to, to not try to do the comparison a little bit that I've heard here in the committee, which is to think about, oh, what would it be at the other site? Once we commit to this site, the MSB process requires us to stay committed to that site. So, you know, I, I want people to understand that we are not gonna have that ability uh, unless uh, I hear something from Kathy or, or Margaret or uh, Donna to the contrary. Our decision today is consequential and we, are, we don't get to go back and, and say, well, what would it be at the other site? So thank you all. Thank you, Jonathan. Alicia, I'm, I'm reserving the right to go last, so Alicia. <laughs> Um, thank you, Kathy. Uh, I also just want to say that this is um, a very difficult decision, uh, but I think that one thing that most of us can very firmly agree on is that we need a new school building. Um, and so I'd say that there are a couple of things, because this was not like a super very clear cut decision for me that sort of stuck out more than others. And so I wanted to talk about those things. Um, and so one of those things to me were our finances as well, because um, I know a lot of you know that I did raise the initial bell in terms of the cost of the um, completed project. And so I think that to me, ultimately what all of this information and research has shown is that our finances only indicate that we need a new school and we need it now. I don't think the finances clearly point to which site over the other, just that if this project fails, that that will be significant for our finances. Um, and I think that that's one thing to really pay attention to. Um, I think that I'm, I'm glad that the school committee was able to go back and edit the square footage of the building because I think that helped us get the cost down when they're already very significant. Um, and I just wanted to be clear because I also asked that to happen, that I did not ask that to happen from the special education places because I do have children who have special education needs that just so happened to be the places where the school committee went back and edited. Um, and, and I am thankful for that. And I think it turned out, <clears throat> I, I think I'm happy with the turnout of those decisions. Um, some of the other things um, I think we talked about was the intersections and the traffic. And I think that I, while that is also a very big factor to me, I didn't find, Wildwood may slight, be slightly favorable, but I didn't find it to be a big enough difference in terms of it is good to go as it is. I think there will be a significant amount of mitigation needing to happen at both sites in order to address the traffic conditions. Um, and so I don't think that was like a huge deciding factor for me either. Um, I, I would actually call that pretty, there's going to be a significant investment in traffic, no matter which site we choose. Um, and I think that's something to think about also to keep in mind that those costs were not included um, in our numbers here. So no matter where we choose, that will be an investment. The other um, thing I wanted to talk about a little bit is the walkability of the sites. Um, and I think it's questionable whether or not Wildwood is actually more walkable and just that it's nestled into a neighborhood and that inevitably makes it seem more walkable because the people in that neighborhood 
can walk to the school more easily as opposed to a school that's not in a neighborhood where people live right around the corner. Um, and also just thinking about the demographics of that neighborhood um, and how honestly privileged one must be to say that they will just sell their house and move to be near another elementary school because there are a number of people who do not have that opportunity and will not have that choice. Um, and so I wouldn't take the intersection, the walkability, or those things that were previously like very important to me. I, they, they aren't swaying me either way um, in this decision because of the information that we have got in terms of those things. Um, but then the, the last two things that I think sort of did change my mind and sway my decision were um, the outdoor space. Um, and besides just regular kids being able to play during recess and having the space for that, I think thinking about um, COVID because we are coming out of the pandemic and the possibility again, because this school will be serving us for 50 years of other pandemics, which has been, I think a big talk that this is something that we're going to continue to see in the future. And not that I know that there will be another one within the next 50 years, but I think that it's inevitable that there will be another pandemic. And so planning to be able to have children utilize outdoor space for learning, um, because I, I don't know about you all, but it was very hard for me to have my kids home for that period of time. And so wanting to make sure that the children can stay in school um, and ac have access to outdoor spaces for not only play, but for learning. Um, that also just leads into the next thing, which was like the biggest deciding factor for me. And that was the disruption during construction. Um, and I had like a very hard time with this one because I, I do know that if you're looking at a timeline of things like a 50 year school and only two years of disruption, that seems very minimal, but I will have two of my three children be in this school during construction. Um, and so this is very important to me because when I look at sort of the growth that my children have, or I would say the lack thereof that my children have experienced because of two years out of school due to COVID, I think it's actually very significant. And also as an educator in a different school system to see how the other kids have been affected by the dysregulation for two years is very significant. Um, and so I don't, I, I just don't, I honestly don't appreciate the conversation saying, well, it's just this, we shouldn't think about the effect on the kids because it would be absolutely detrimental to my kids and their entire future to have two additional years of disruption. Um, and my kids are not just numbers. They matter very much to me as, as I'm sure other parents whose children will be in the school at that time. Um, and then, so I also just really quickly want to talk about the cost of the project um, and Fort River being a higher cost. I think we also know that the higher cost for Fort River is in the site work. Um, that's where most of it resides in uh, treating the, the high water levels and raising the fields. Um, and I think that one, that that is a very, I think that's a wise investment for our town and for our children. I don't think it's just like putting money into a retaining wall. I think a less wise investment um, for money that's going to be spent. And also thinking about the different ways that we can supplement the high cost of this project. Because again, I think that we, no matter which site we choose, we will see increase in costs and things that we didn't expect to come up. Um, like for Wildwood, the Hawthorne site is not taken into consideration. I think it is known that we will need to do something to that site if we want the kids to have play space. That could be a significant investment as well. Um, and just knowing that we know where that money will go and we know that there are funds that can offset those costs. And so I just want to state personally that like my commitment as a town counselor if we were to choose the wild site, and I'm not saying that I won't have a commitment, I mean, if we choose the Fort River site, and I have an equal commitment to passing this project no matter where we choose, but if we choose Fort River, I am dedicated to looking at alternative funding sources specifically um, for the field, because I think that there have been conversations about not only CPA funds, but other funding sources that, that will be able to offset those costs. And I think that's very important to think about when we're talking about the debt override and what that difference will be for the voters and for the taxpayers, um, which I think that if we can offset the cost, won't be a significant difference in terms of what each taxpayer will be raised every year um, in this over the span of 30 years at Wildwood, as opposed to if we chose Fort River. Um, and so 
for all of those reasons. And in addition that I just have heard more um, from community members and people who were reaching out to me, my constituents in favor of Fort River um, and, and not all, but a, a large majority were in favor of Fort River. I think that I am leaning more heavily towards the Fort River site. Thank you, Alicia. Um, okay, I get the privilege, I guess, of speaking last. Um, and I'm gonna try not to repeat anything. This has been an extremely difficult decision to me. Um, and I've gone back and actually reread the site conditions more than once, and that's not um, a novel. It's not fiction. I find it really difficult <laughs> to read the te technical. Um, one of my, uh, you know, when I see look at Wildwood, it's a beautiful, quiet setting nestled into the hillside, the campus feeling of it. But the really, and, and I think the traffic is much less a, a concern there. I think it's we, we could solve it there. I'm not sure how I see it solving. We would have to live with it at Fort River. The, the thing that swung the needle for me, um, and each morning when I wake up, I'm not sure where the needle ended up, was the disruption and the small site at Wildwood. And I think if we spent money, we might be able to overcome some of it, but no matter what, we only have the one entrance coming in. It has to be shared with contractors. As a couple of people pointed out, there's plenty of green space and there will be a lot of green space once the school is built, but we haven't in the cost estimates put money in to get the additional access to it. So it, in, in trying to figure out whether I could get to a comfort level on Fort River, water was my big issue. Um, we have a long history in Amherst. Uh, it's not just the floodplain, it is the water table. So last week, um, I'm being assured by experts, but I would like to know that the experts are right. Um, I, so I called the East Hampton High School that has been built, was cited to us. It was open more than 10 years ago. It has indeed, the fields have been okay. The building has been fine. One thing that people cautioned is that we get more rainfall in spurts than we used to get. So it's not just a flood, it's the sheer amount of rain that's coming down and the drainage off the roof and the pipes that it was going into was inadequate and they're gonna to have to re-engineer it because too much water was flowing down. So it's, it's fixable, but they have to go up and fix it. And they're building a second school in East Hampton having recognized the rainfall is increasing in Massachusetts. And by what the way, the FEMA doesn't look forward, they just look backwards to floodplains. Um, but uh, the next school they're building, they're doing a different drainage system to address this. I also called uh, a facility director in Needham where there were two different schools that were on wetlands or near wetlands or near brooks. And basically they both had positive reports. The engineering solutions had, had worked on those sites. So I, have decided I have to put my trust in the design team. I think we have an excellent design team. Um, and uh, Jonathan and others who are builders in the community keep patting me on the back saying th these solutions will work. Um, it is a hundred million, more than a hundred million dollar bet that they will work. So uh, I don't have any expertise that I can go in a different direction. Um, so I will end this with, I think we have two different excellent choices. Um, Sean asked me before we started whether I'd ever had to wrestle with this tough a decision before, and it was only once, and it was different. I knew for sure where I was on that. I just didn't know whether I could persuade everyone to come with me, and it was on national health care. It wasn't anything to do with the building. Here, I, 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 th I think I've been swung, and it was by those staging diagrams that the UNESCO team did on how do you build a, school, a new school while the other school is still sitting there? And I think it's just too high a cost for our children. Um, so I'm coming down on the side of Fort River. And I will say the additional cost to me, I think is a benefit also. We are getting, it will appeal. We, we have gotten people saying they're looking forward to the fields. Um, so it's, uh, it's a school and it's fields. And I think if our teachers are creative, and I believe they are, 
there's an environmental with the school being a net zero school that we can be teaching off of, but wetlands are a potential teachable, bio systems are teachable. So there are opportunities to use that green space in a way that young kid can benefit from. And I will end my remarks. I did have more written remarks, but because we have this fantastic group of people, almost everyone mentioned every other sentence that I was planning on saying. So I, I think that closes it. And if people are ready, um, I think we entertain a motion. And, you know, as, as Margaret showed you on the motion sheet, it's a motion where you insert the site. Um, Sean, Sean's hand is up. I'm not making a motion. I just wanted to clarify one thing because I heard it a couple of times. Um, I don't think this will sway anybody's vote, but I just wanted to make it clear that we can't count on being able to use CPA funds for this project. Um, one, it, it may be considered supplanting if the project's already approved to then change a funding source to CPA at that point. Um, and the other reason is it has everything has to go through the CPA committee. So I just want to make sure that if anyone thinks that's something the that council can do on its own, um, that's not the case. Phoebe. So I will make the motion. <laughs> um, Margaret, can I get that wording though that you want us to use? Sure. Or I can just, you know, wing it. Let me make sure I'm getting you the right screen. Hang on a second. Nope. Let me get wrong screen. Okay, let me see the screen. I, I can have about 15 documents open here. Here we go. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we, Phoebe, we are- Right here, I see right it. Right here. So I make a motion to select Fort River as the preferred site. Do I hear a second? I second that motion. Second. And who said second? I um, just, Alicia. Alicia, okay, Alicia second. Okay, then we proceed to a vote. And let me just make sure I've got my um, sheet with everybody's name. Um, Angelica. Yes. Paul. No. Simone. No. Allison. Yes. Ben. No. Sean. No. Phoebe. Yes. Mike. Yes. Rupert. No. Jonathan. Yes. Kathy is a yes. Tammy. Yes. Elisha. Yes. So I think um, my tally says I called on everyone. Is that correct? Um, I think so. No, I didn't miss anyone. So I'm just going to do a count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Margaret, did you did you get a count as you went through? Yeah. Okay. I so. have eight eight in favor and nine opposed. Sorry, what, five <laughs> opposed. One, two, three, four, five. So the motion passes. So we have one more motion. Um, this just consolidates the two of them so we can give language to um, Danisco. And I will make this motion. It's a motion to select a new three-story building on the Fort River site as the preferred solution in the report to MSBA. Do I hear a second? Second. Paul and has his hand up. Paul, Paul I see you hand up. So just to clarify, this is the vote that will be transmitted to the MSBA? Yes, and, and just Donna, can you tell me, will we transmit all three votes that we, that we went through in this staged way? Yeah. It, it, um, Margaret can echo this, but I think it's fine how, how you're voting for it. There, it's, there's a document that actually needs to be signed that 
is is what they're going to need. But so so your vote, the way it's being handled, is fine. And then there's a document that three of you will need to sign. I think it's Mike, Kathy, and Paul, or or it's or Allison, Allison yeah. or Allison. Yeah. And and the minutes last time they wanted us to Margaret will write up the minutes and the record of the vote and the minutes will need to be certified is what they asked us for. Correct. With Correct. That. Well, and actually we're two weeks in advance. We might actually have it in before, before we submit this time. So it's fine. So are there any, um, so I need to take a vote just on that final wording um, to make sure that we, once before they made us convene a meeting to take a vote because I didn't do it quite correctly. So I just would like to, um, so I've got a second on the combined. And again, this is a motion to select a new three-story building on the Fort River site as the preferred solution in the report to MSBA. Um, Sean. I was just gonna say, um, and others can choose to do this if they want, that I'm gonna change my vote to yes for this vote, um, just because I think we all kind of uh, convey that we're supportive of the project at either site. Um, so I will be changing my vote to yes for this final vote that we um, sent to MSBA. Okay, and did I, did was there a second for the motion? I seconded it. Okay, uh, show the second. Okay, so we will move to a vote. Angelica. Kathy, um, yes. Sorry, Kathy, did, the motion was just make sure that it's clear that it's for 575 students because it's for the combined. Okay. okay, so I will change it. M motion to select a new three-story building for 575. For the consolidation, yes, yeah, say for the consolidation of the Fort River and Wildwood schools for a total of 575 students. That just covers everyone. Okay, so I have rewritten it. Motion to select a new three-story building for the consolidation of Fort River and Wildwood schools for a total of 575 students on the Fort River site as the preferred solution. Um, that, that wording gets it? Yes, okay. So that is the wording we're voting on. Um, Angelica. Yes. Paul. Yes. Simone. Yes. Allison. Yes. Ben. Yes. Sean. Yes. Phoebe. Yes. Mike. Yes. Rupert. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Kathy is a yes. Uh, Tammy. Yeah. And Alicia. Yes. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, we we actually made the decision. Donna is. Um, yeah, Margaret. <laughs> Donna, Donna, Donna is clapping. Um, I just I want to personally thank everyone. I'm just going to make a couple. We we do have a public comment periods, uh, and I'm setting so I am conscious of that but I just want to thank everyone including the design team and our OPM for um, bending over backwards to give us information and support uh, as we wrestled with this decision um, we I also want to just pat all of ourselves on the back I think we've conducted a very open and deliberative process um, and to me this is a big step forward and we can move from uh, these odd little diagrams we're looking at to architectural and engineering that'll give us a 3D look at the building. And um, we can, it's an exciting phase where we're gonna be able to talk to the town and the residents about what the school can look like, what it can mean for the town and build, and build support. So I'm, this is the beginning of a process and I know Angelica at one point talked about having a table at the farmer's market, but we're going to need help with um, some fact sheets as we go along, you know, talking about, up, you know, what this means for our kids and our for community. Um, we have a meeting on the 24th, and I do see Mike's, and at that meeting, that's Friday, the 24th, that is when we will be reviewing the report, and we've seen big sections of it already. It's got the... Um, 
site conditions in it, the traffic report, and now there will be a section written on the preferred solution and how we reach that conclusion with the updated costs. So we will be voting on that. And I would be between now and the 24th, I will work with the Danisco and Margaret to figure out a meeting schedule. Cause right now that's the last meeting we have posted, but to, will, will we meet in July? How often in July and August and just at critical points. And the one other thing I wanna mention is way back when in December, in January, we talked about potentially visiting a few schools to see something in action. What does the school look like? What does the cafetorium look like? Um, our team went to the Springfield School, but if some of that can be arranged over the summer to a few schools, um, Donna said at one point she takes large groups with her. So it's not just a select few. So we'll come back um, just with an agenda setting with some, we won't set dates, but we'll talk about dates and then we'll do a poll on when people can meet. Um, so I, that's all I have to say right now, but Mike, I wanna get hear anyone with any comments before I uh, open it for public comments. Mike. Yeah, I'll be brief. I just wanna, um... Thank you, acknowledge the statements you just made, Kathy. I wanna thank you as chair, because this was shepherding, this process is not an easy thing. And I think you've done it uh, exceptionally well and connected with, you know, the people need to be connected and answered questions, both members of the public and members of this committee. So I wanna thank you. And I also wanna just acknowledge and appreciate that we had a split vote and that's a good thing, right? So for people who uh, felt like Wildwood should be a better site, those, concerns people had about Fort River, I just encourage people to keep on raising, it, right? You know, while the decisions made, it's not that those considerations were inaccurate or uh, were shouldn't be considered as we move forward. And so um, I know it sounds strange, everyone loves unanimous votes and, and we got there at the end and appreciate people uh, getting us to the MSBA sees that. But I think on the site piece, the people with concerns about Fort River keep raising them um, because those are, Highlight folks who voted that way highlighted very real concerns that will be need to address need to be need to be addressed and I just I'm really pleased with the dialogue and, and people's contributions and I think that's a good model for us and actually for our community that we can have disagreements uh, and at the end we do move forward but it's the considerations and the concerns uh, come with that right so not that we're going to go back and say oh we should change the site but ooh this traffic thing is real. What are we going to do? And how are buses going to queue? And all those pieces are really, really valuable. So I, I just wanted to thank you, Kathy, and thank the committee for such informed dialogue and uh, that'll continue into the future. And it's exciting. As superintendent schools, I'm just saying, I'm excited. I would have been excited no matter which way it went because it's a step forward to resolving a problem that uh, it's, we're, we're about on nine years uh, of getting into MSBA process in the first place. And so I know we're not at the end, right? Bricks aren't being uh, shipped to us yet. It's, we're not there. Uh, but at the same point, it, it's something that's sorely overdue. Uh, we experience it and Tammy, Allison, thank you. You deal with it every day and try to make the best of, uh, of a, a situation and, and the staff at Fort River and Wildwood, absolutely phenomenal how you try to make the best of it and our facilities team to try to support them in that. And, you know, suboptimal is not the right word. It's it's less than suboptimal, right? We need to do this. We need to get going. We need to have a new building. And I'm just pleased that the next step on this path is is kind of, you know, we can see it in the future now, a little clearer. And just thanks to the consultants and everybody for getting us there. Thank you. Jonathan. Jonathan. Um, briefly, just to, to echo uh, Mike's thanks to all for, for all that we've done so far, but also to put on the list of things to, look at for agendas. Uh, I think the, the net zero subcommittee needs to uh, start to meet at, at some regular point here with the design team to talk out the, the particulars and any other input they may, may need from us. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. I, I, I neglected to say that because we also, we the design, as everyone knows, the design has been estimated at with ground source, but we haven't formally said that is our choice. And so I think we both need to do net zero, but then we're, the full committee will have to weigh in on that once we get additional information. So in scheduling, um, that's a top priority. And Tim has said more than once, sooner is better than later, <laughs> Our Tim and, the, and our, our design and architectural team. So 
any other comments before I open it for uh, to the public? I'm not seeing any. Uh, so of um, public and Sean, uh, there are three hands up. And Sean, can you help me um, bring them in to allow them to speak? Thank you. Yeah, Anna Devlin Gauthier is coming in. Hi, Anna, you have joined us. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to take a moment and thank all of you for the immense amount of work um, and, and care that you've put into this process, especially Kathy, absolutely all of the rounds of applauses for, for um, your job as chair here. The care that you all gave was evident in every meeting, but also outside of those meetings in how you engaged with our community. Um, and I agree with Mike that a split vote means we're gonna come out with a stronger project. I actually really don't like unanimous votes because I feel like we don't challenge uh, ourselves necessarily when we have them. So I'm excited about a non-unanimous vote because I think that those, um, those points raised are really important and will we'll strengthen this overall. Um, so ultimately, I just wanted to comment and thank you, each and every one of you for uh, holding the many, many needs of our community at the forefront. We've got some good work to do in communicating and moving through these next decisions uh, with our community, but this is such an exciting first step and thank you all. Thank you all so, so much, truly. Thank you, Anna. Um, I try to promote Lynn, um, but she wasn't moving over, so I brought over um, Jennifer. Okay, Jennifer, you have joined us and there are still three more people. So we will get every, we will hopefully get to everyone if the technology works. Jennifer. Hi everyone. I am super excited about this project and I wanna thank each of you for your hard work. And I know your work isn't done yet for your hours of meetings and pouring over documents and for your thoughtful deliberations on these decisions. You have my commitment on supporting this project 100% as a school committee member and as a community member, as well as drumming up community support. I think this is gonna be really fantastic for our school community and for the community at large. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. Lynn, you have joined us. Yes, I, I really just wanna echo what Anna and Jennifer have just said. And to say that this is a momentous step forward for our community. This committee has done so much hard work. You've looked at more data and more information than any other committee that I am aware of in Amherst. And you've taken that assignment seriously. And so just on behalf of the town council and myself and the community of Amherst, we wanna thank you. We wanna thank you for this hard work and this great next step. And now let's go out and make sure it happens. Thanks. Thank you, Lynn. Chris, um, if you unmute, you are you have joined us. Very impressed with this process. This is a terrific committee. It's very been very open and people can participate. And thank you for all your work. I'm very eager to move ahead with the discussion of the net zero aspects of this project. Uh, and uh, I think there's some big decisions we have to make pretty soon on that. And I'm looking forward to that process. But again, thank you all very much. You're terrific. Thank you, Chris. Maria, um, you can unmute. You have joined the room. Um, but you have to unmute. We can't hear you. Um, I'm a little emotional, so I just want to, I have just a couple things to say. Thank you so very much to this committee. I know for some of you, this was a bit of a leap of faith, um, but I want to reassure you, I, I believe the science. I am fully confident in your geotechnical engineers and the design team. Uh, I also am fully confident in the power of public advocacy and don't discount the ability of people to get things done on traffic as well as other uh, issues. This committee was put um, in a very difficult position. You were put at a crossroads um, in this town and I think that the path we're on is going to lead to healing of this community. Um, 
and I'm looking forward to giving <coughs> my support and to giving you all my energy to bring all of this project home, all of the fields, all of the traffic, everything. Um, so you have my commitment and my gratitude. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Maria. Peter, you are here with us and you have unmuted. Welcome, Peter. Peter Demery. Thank, <clears throat> thank you. Um, so, I mean, plus 1,000 to all the, the thanks and gratitude that have been expressed to your committee so far. Um, I'm super unbelievably elated, excited uh, that we're at this moment. Um, I feel so personally connected to this effort. Um, I, I began on the school committee the day that this, the last project, um, the last vote failed. And so this is this is very um, connective for me. Um, I'm also 100% committed to supporting this project. Um, and I also wanna take a, a moment to thank my colleague on the school committee, Jennifer, for just now declaring that uh, that she is also committed to supporting this project. It's, it's no secret that in town, uh, we have some differences, some often loud uh, differences of opinion when it comes to either this decision or other decisions on, on the project. And, and there's obviously been political tension in the past with regards to project support, but um, I'm, I'm very excited for this town to be able to move forward uh, together uh, in support of a project that is still going to need a whole lot of work, um, not just to uh, complete the final proposal, but to support. Uh, we're asking our residents, our taxpayers, to to pay a lot of money over a, a long number of years, uh, and so we need to do a lot to justify that, to explain it, and and to to get this across the finish line. But I could not be uh, happier than uh, than what you've done today. So thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Rudy, you have joined us. If you unmute, Rudy Perkins, and you're not unmuted yet. Sorry about that. Um, I, I just want to echo thanks to the committee also, and to say I'm going to be joining, sounds like the very large ranks of people enthusiastically advocating for this project. Um, I think it's going to bring together the town, and I'm very excited. And if you see the last three, the last two speakers plus me all saying the same thing at the same time, you, you've already seen some of that. So. Uh, thank you so much for your wise decision today and your thank hard work. You, thank you, Rudy. Um, and I am not seeing any other hands up on the public. Um, so uh, I already said my last sentences, so I won't repeat them. Um, I just I want to remind everyone that on June 24th at 830 in the morning, we are meeting again. And uh, Donna and Tim and everyone else on the Danisco team will be working to get us a final version of a report that we can read and submit. Um, that is just a beginning because MSBA uh, rarely just says, congratulations, we, we may get comments back from them. Um, there is, we will be on time to meet their August meeting um, thanks to these tight deadlines. There's some other work we need to do. Um, they actually asked for, uh, Donna, what did they do? They asked for kind of a presentation, a set of charts. Um, they, um, this, it, it's interesting, they don't have enough money to make, to pay for a net zero school, but they certainly are willing to put up various hoops for us to have to write a lot for them. So, uh, so but, Again, June twenty fourth is when we'll be together again. And Donna, I see your hand is up. So please. yeah, I just yeah, thank you. I, I just um, prior to getting to the MSBA board meeting, and actually, I know Kathy, Paul, Mike, um, they would love for you to participate and be available and maybe speak on behalf of the community or and or maybe some of your representatives. So maybe just put. Um, August 31st on your calendar. But um, yes, Kathy, there prior to going to the board and to supplement what we're submitting in this um, preferred schematic report is we will be going before the facility assessment subcommittee group with the presentation and um, kind of outlining the process pretty quickly, but then putting together why this site and how this site and building work, et cetera, meeting MSBA's criteria. So they actually, 
wanted it the day that we submitted our report, which is crazy, but um, they've given us a whole nother week to work on that. But so you won't be seeing that on the 27th or, or the 24th, but we will be submitting it. But that's for the bill for MSBA to ask the questions that they want to ask in an informal way without bogging down those conversations at the board meeting. So that to Kathy, Mike, and maybe Paul, um, once we have that date, I think we have tentative dates that we should also get that on the calendar. Thank you, Donna. And, uh, and Margaret, after this meeting, will get us, uh, I think at least one or two other scores came in, but we'll get that we will have a matrix to look at as well as a potential uh, set of meetings at the next meeting. Um, so I think um, I'm not seeing any other hands. I just want to give a huge personal thanks to everyone, um, including our traveler in the wilds who wasn't sure she'd have enough power on her phone to stay connected, but Angelica has managed to stay with us. Thank you so much. And um, I'm thrilled to be able to go to bed tonight without having changed my mind in the morning <laughs> to tell you the truth is the way I've been struggling with the site decision um, and I think we've made a good decision and I'm glad we all came together so I think we are adjourned at 10:22, and uh, we will make sure we have a record and enjoy graduation week those of you who are saying goodbye to the students. Um, thank you very much for all the extra time that you've put into this. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>